All right. So in this case, we are going to consider another typical exam question, which is question number six. AB represents the graph of AX plus Q, which is the format of uh, Y is equal to MX uh, plus C. So we are given for all real values of X. So that is the line AB. It's a straight line. So from this part that we are given, we are now asked on 6.1, determine the value of the gradient of AB. All right. So in actual sense, they can ask this as uh, determine uh, the value of M. Remember, if you are given uh, the format of Y is equal to MX plus C, if you are given this format of Y is equal to MX plus C, the M uh, represents the gradient as I stated before, and the C is the Y intercept. So the M, since it is the gradient, so therefore you can write M, the gradient, the change in Y over the change in X, which we can determine from any points, any points that you can have as long they are on the graph. Or you can simply work with the change in Y. As you can see from point A, Y is going down. That's a negative 3. The change in Y is moving in the negative. That's a negative 3 over the change in X. X is going to the positive up to the point B, which is at 3. So this is going to give us a gradient of minus 1. That is by using the graph, the change in Y over the change in X. Using the formula, we can use that formula, which is fine, y2 minus y1, which means in that case, we can still have the same answer. That is, m is equal to y2 by taking the points on the graph. If you are using any, you can take any point as long it is on the, on the graph, any point of your choice, two points, all right? So in this case, I'm going to take two points that lies on this line, a, b, the point a, remember, that is, uh, in this y-axis, x is equal to zero. Remember, this is the y-axis where x is equal to a zero. So the point here is given as uh, zero three. X is equal to zero in the x-axis. Remember that y is equal to zero. So x is the one that we are given and y is at, at zero. So we can use these two points, x1, y1, x2, y2. That's we can substitute into the formula y2, which is 0 minus uh, y1, which is 3, over uh, x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is a 0. That was going to still give us minus uh, 1. That's minus 3 over a 3, which was going to give us what? A minus 1. Or you can simply uh, do that by movement. All right. So that is um, our gradient. Determine the equation of A, B in the format that we are given of Y is equal to AX plus Q or Y is equal to MX plus C. In this format, we need the equation. All right, so remember that C represents the Y intercept uh, from this format that we are given. Uh, the C that we are seeing is the Y intercept where the line cuts the Y axis or where the line crosses uh, the Y axis, which is at this y axis here at point three. So we have already m, which is the gradient. So it's, it was simply to substitute into the equation, into this format that we are given using y is equal to mx plus c, y is equal to m, which is the gradient minus one times x, which is minus one x or minus x plus c, which is the y intercept. Our line crosses or passes the y axis at three. So that's our equation. Y is equal to minus X plus a three. That's we are done. So you can use any other way, guys. It's up to you. Uh, the presentation there is actually in your, in your hands. Uh, on the same grid, that is draw the graph of uh, Y is equal to 2X plus one for all the real values of X. That is on the same grid, but we are given this on this uh, part. So we just need to draw on this other graph uh, that we are given. So remember this, we're already having a line. Now we need to indicate another one uh, that we are given. But the concept of uh, drawing is not going to change. All right, so that's y is equal to 2x plus 1. So let's see what are we going to have. Uh, y is equal to 2x plus 1. All right, so if you were to use the Dual intercept method is going to be complicated uh, when you divide by these two, all right? 
which which is gonna be having the decimals like for you to have approximations it was gonna be difficult but you can use that or you can simply use your table method remember the table method is not limited like i said the table method is not limited you can use the table method on any format that you are given as long you are going to have the input values which are the values of x that you substitute in here all right so you can substitute any value uh when x is minus three it's in your hands uh let's see if you're gonna have values there you can even use the minus two a little bit closer to the graph minus two uh we can even use zero we can even use a two all right we can use minus two zero and two any there of cho uh, your choice but like i said uh three values are actually enough they are enough so if you substitute this when x is minus two you plug in minus two into your equation that's two times minus two which is minus four plus one that's gonna be uh minus three the same thing uh if this x is a zero you plug a zero there two times zero that's a zero plus one which is one if this x you move on uh is a two you plug in two in place of x that's two times two which is four plus one that was going to be a five so if this is two you're going to obtain a five so these are the values that you are going to simply uh indicate on your graph when x is minus two y is minus three so that's x minus two y minus three when x is minus two here y is minus three they do meet uh, at this point so you just uh plug this and this they meet at a certain point where they meet you mark a point so that's minus two and minus three they meet at this point uh zero versus one this is the point in the y intercept where x where y is equal to one we do not have anything for x so that's at one here uh, two versus five when x is two y is supposed to be five they do meet at this point where they meet you mark a point so that is with these three points that we are seeing they are enough for us to obtain uh, a straight line like i said the joy intercept was going to be limited because of the fraction that you're going to have you're going to obtain a fraction but if you had to use that i'm not saying it is uh, wrong but to indicate or to uh, observe where the fraction is like it's going to be complicated situation uh, that you be working with so that was something of this nature that is our line of uh, y is equal to 2x plus 1 all right so that was it then from this graph here we are now given from the graph determine the value x y which is a point where the two graphs are equal that is where the two graphs intersect show your outcome on the graph uh, with the symbol m that's one mark for that so this uh, question was actually uh, impossible for you to have direct on the graph because if you check we can't determine these because we do know we do understand that this is at the point of intersection here this is where you are supposed to indicate m but we do not know what's going to be the value of x there are you going to see that the value correspond was we do not have a scale that we can tell is this going to be two and a half is this going to be two and a third is it going to be 0, 0.5 or what so in that case, you can just make an approximation because you do not have exact values that, that you can have or just indicate the point M you are done because this is not a straightforward graph that you can have. Like there are boxes that you can count. You cannot do that. So in this case, we cannot uh, conclude that this is 2 over 3 or 1 over 3 or 1 over 5 or 0, 0,5. But we can just make an approximation, maybe 0, 0,5 and this year maybe to be 2,5. But this was not a fair enough question uh, because we do not have the proper presentation of the graph. So in that case, you approximate. You approximate because that's a just one mark question, remember? You are not going to solve this simultaneous equation. Was, uh, no. If it was supposed to be like that, they were going to ask, uh, but we are supposed to, from, the, they want you to take the answers directly from the graph, which is impossible. Which is impossible. We can't. We can't. Uh, we can't assume that this point here is zero comma five, or this is uh, zero comma three. What we do know is that the box, the wall of this, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. But in between, we do not have those smaller boxes that we can count, unless if there were smaller boxes that you can count. 
then in that case, you can count those, those smaller boxes according to the scale that you are given. You say, okay, the smaller box represents one, or it represents two, or it represents comma what? You work with the box. But in this case, it was impossible for you to uh, have that. So you're just going to have an assumption. Uh, you assume uh, your answers in that interval that you are given. That is your assumption. It lies within the points that you are given. All right, so that's what we had, guys, on this question. Uh, like I said, let's revise as much questions as we can.